Hi, just an updated video on FSUAE with LaunchBox. Now, I've just brought to my attention that the stable version with the launcher does not launch the games in LaunchBox, but the development version is. There is ways around it on the stable version, but you don't really want to do that. You want to use the latest development version which at the moment is 2.71 and everything will be fine. I have played around with getting safe states working with WHD load games and the trouble is on FSUAE and WinUAE it's unstable at the moment because I've got it to work a couple of times but other times it's crashed the game because it's basically emul emulating an Amiga with the hard drive. The first time you load the game, the hard drive may be acting one way with certain paths. So you save the state, you reload the game, and it could be different paths, etc. When you load the new state in, it confuses it, and it crashes. So my advice to you is, if you just want to play games normally without save states, use WHD load games. But the reason why I'm making this is to show you how to make ADF files work in LaunchBox which does support save states. Now if you want just basic one disk games you can basically drag the ADF file into LaunchBox. No adjustments are necessary and it will just run normally. Now the only problem I found with this is if you add them using just the default options it shares the save states. So if you can see here you've got your load states it saves it with all the games that use the default path. So that's the only problem there. As you can see, that's a basic game running OK. That's just a one disc game now. But when you've got something like Secret of Monkey Island, which I think is nine, ten discs, then you've got to make a configuration file. But the way it works is, I'll show you how to make a configuration file in a minute. As you can see, it's running. Now, as I've made a configuration file for this game, the save states will be separate. So, if you make a configuration file, even if you do it for a one disk game, the save states will be separate. So now it's asking me for disk 10. Now it only emulates four drives. So what you do is when you make the configuration files, I'll say I'll show you in a minute. You can add discs to be swapped. So if I add in the fourth drive, monkey 10. It will find that. Now just to show you. state as a state I made earlier. The only time I've had a crash with this is where I saved a state and then I reloaded the state with different disks in the drive. It couldn't find the disk it thought it had in the drive. So, but not many games are more than four disks anyway, so and if you've got a game that's more than four discs, 
just make sure what discs you've got in the drives, to be honest. So I'll exit that, that now. Now it's it's very simple to do actually. All you've got to do, go into my launch box. This is just a little test one I've done just for this. You run the launcher. Okay. Now this is my configuration file there for the game. So if I just select that and select configs, it's got the configuration files that I've done. So for Secret of Monkey Island, I've selected the Amiga model A1200. Most of it's already set up. The joysticks are already set up. But because I know it works on the Amiga 1200, that's why I selected it. Your best bet for most games, unless they're AG, AGA games, and for compatibility wise, is to select 500. It's like Mega Romania there. If you select anything other than an A500, it won't work. There's a, a lot of min Amiga games are finicky about that. I always remember when I had an Amiga years ago, I bought a 12, A1200 and upgraded, and a lot of my games wouldn't work until somebody came out with a little disc that you could downgrade it just to run the games with. So, Secret of Monkey Island, all I've done is selected A1200, it's automatically selected that. Now, on the discs, what you do is you select, you click on drive count and I've clicked four drives because obviously there's a lot of games there. Now you can insert the discs into the drive manually or you can just click multi-select. You can click all of those and it will add the first four into the drives and then it will add the rest into the swap list which is basically when you go into the menu to swap discs it makes that swap list. Other options you don't really need to change, CD-ROM drive, hard drives, no. Memory, you can play about with that if you like, but I don't think it will make much difference. Uh, joystick options, but as you say, mine's automatically configured to an X-input controller and a Windows mouse. Uh, there's expansion slots there if you want to get more advanced into it. And additional things, the only thing I've changed, changed which is really good, because the games take so long to load, you can increase the floppy drive speed to up to 800. So all you do is before all of that, you click the Make New Configuration button. You, you do everything I, I said, I oh, put the Amiga model in. For most games, 1200. Add your discs, name the configuration and save it. It's always best just to click start and test it first. As you can see that works and I can load the state in to get to where I was on the game. clear obviously make sure you click this to save the configuration then all you need to do is go into your configuration folders that's the secret of monkey island could be any easier just drag and drop it into launch box that's all you need to do and when you double click it it will it will load that configuration with the drives set etc so basically that's it that's how easy it is for adf games as i say if you've got a load of single disc games which you only want to save normally then i would just add them normally if there's games that you know i.e if they're multiple discs or you know you're going to want to have separate save states 
make a separate configuration. Maybe a little bit long-winded, but I just find this emulator runs so well. So I hope that helped some people. Any questions, please ask.